Hey everybody, welcome back to Print and Play. Now, after a bit of hiatus, I thought it was time to get back into doing some project work. A couple of years ago, there was a very successful Kickstarter campaign run for a project called the Arduo Boy. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Arduo Boy aimed to be a video game console based on a cheap OLED display and an Arduino. And it was wildly successful and met its funding goals, and uh, they sold a bunch of them. In fact, you can still buy one today for about $50 US. Well, after doing some digging, it turns out all of the parts are pretty widely available. And I thought it would be really awesome to try and build one from scratch. So I ordered the parts from China, and they showed up, and I decided to put together a tutorial so that you guys can build your own as well. It's a really nice introduction to Arduino and the IDE, which is the Integrated Development Environment. That's where you write your code as well as upload it onto an Arduino to make it do what you want. In addition, it's a fairly easy soldering job, and it will introduce you to breadboarding, which is building prototype circuits without having to do any soldering at all. So, part one of this tutorial is going to be installing and configuring the Arduino IDE, as well as downloading your first game and putting the software onto your Arduino. In part two, we'll do the breadboarding. In part three, we'll look at building a prototype on a circuit board. And part four, we'll be getting into the design, building of a case, and then mounting the electronics inside. So I hope you guys will join me and uh, let's get started. Well, the first step of this project is going to be getting the Arduino IDE installed on your computer. So, the easiest way to do this is to either follow the link in the description or to hit up Google. You can just type in Arduino IDE, and it's going to be linked directly on the first link in Google. So go ahead and click on Arduino Software IDE, and it's going to bring you to a page that gives you a couple of options. Now, we don't want to use the web one, we actually want to get the one that we can download and install on your computer. So if you're running Windows, you've got a couple options. You have the installer or the zip file. I personally prefer the zip file because it allows me to copy the folder it creates to another computer later on, which means once I've got it set up once, I can easily back it up, move it to a friend's computer, that type of thing. If I use the installer, I have to install it on each computer individually that I want to run it on. So we'll go ahead and click on the Windows zip file, or at least that's what I'm going to use, and it's going to ask you if you'd like to make a donation. The software itself is free, but you do have the option to donate if you end up getting a lot of use out of it. If you don't want to put a donation in, just go ahead and click the Just Download link and it'll start downloading in the bottom left. Well, that's downloading. We should probably go and find a game since we're going to need that to get started as well. So back to Google we go and all you have to do is type in Arduo Boy Games and you're going to get a link to the latest game topics uh, on the Arduo Boy community. So in here, you'll have the option to download source code for all the games that have been made available by the community. So just scroll through the list until you find something of interest. Squario is kind of a take on Mario. He doesn't have firepower, but he does have the ability to jump on enemies, and it's a, a pretty decent platformer. So let's go ahead and grab that. So you'll click on Squario, and it gives you a little picture of it running on the Arduo Boy. And you'll scroll down to Download the Excitement at, and it's a link to GitHub. Now GitHub is a source code repository that allows you to download source code, modify it, re-upload it, and it keeps all the different versions separate. And if you have specific modifications you want to make, you can basically branch off your own version using the source code that's already there, and uh, it just makes contributive programming a lot easier. It also makes it very easy to grab the source code for this stuff so that we can use it. So go ahead and click on the GitHub link, and you can click on the clone or download link, and then download it as a zip file. It downloads in the corner and uh, once it's done you can open it and then you're going to want to extract this somewhere where you'll be able to find it later on. For me I just created an Arduo Boy folder on my desktop and that's where I've been putting all of my software. So we'll go ahead and copy this into the folder we're going to use it from. Uh, for me it's the Arduo Boy folder on my desktop. Now as you can see I've already extracted it and I renamed it to Squario. When you download something from GitHub, it'll have the name of the project dash the, um, basically the branch it is in the code. Since this is dr downloaded directly from the master source code, it puts dash master. When you download it on your computer, you're only going to remove the dash master because when the code was written, it was written in the, in this case, Squareo folder. And it may complain that it can't find certain elements if it's not in the folder it's expecting. To see what that looks like, you simply can click on it take off the master 
and there you go. When your Arduino zip file is done, you can go ahead and extract it into the folder as well. As you can see, I've already extracted mine to the Arduino-1.8.5 folder. Just go in here and go ahead and double click on Arduino.exe to start it up. Now once it's running, we're going to have to install some files that will allow us to be able to program the Arduino. There's additional libraries that the Arduino boy uses. So go ahead and click Sketch, go to Include Libraries, and then click Manage Libraries. Now this is a repository for all the libraries that are publicly available uh, for your Arduino. And in this case we're going to look for all the ones that apply to Arduino boy. Now I've already installed all of them, but essentially all you have to do is go through one at a time, click on them, and then click the Install button, and that will put the latest version of the library onto your computer. With that complete, we can go ahead and open our source code. So click File, click Open, and then navigate to the folder where you have your game installed. In this case, Squareio is in my Arduino Boy folder. And double click the .ino file. And here we have the Squareio source code. Now we're going to want to put it onto our Arduino. So connect your Arduino using your USB cable. And when you click on Tools, you should see a COM port pop up with, in this case, Arduino Leonard next to it. The board that we're using is a clone of the Arduino Leonard, so that makes sense there. And then you're going to want to select the Arduino Leonard board from the list of available boards as well, so it knows how to program it. With the correct Arduino selected and the source code loaded, all you have to do is click the Upload button to send it on over to the board. Now this does highlight one of the small issues with this particular design. In order to change games, since you can only put one game on at a time, you have to reflash the board every single time. So that means connecting it to your computer every time you want to change games. It's not that really that big of a deal, but you do want to be careful with the USB ports on here because pushing on them too hard and too often can cause them to break off, which essentially ruins the board. And with the uploading done, we are now ready for next week for part two. The software is ready to run, and now all we have to do is use a breadboard to connect it to a screen, some controls, and a speaker if you so desire. Well, hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, toss me a thumbs up. If you're new here, subscribe and click the bell so you're notified when I put out new content, especially since you'll want to be notified when part two of this series goes live. If you have any questions or comments, toss them in the comments below, and until next time, stay creative.